Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Station PC P2 from Firefly. Now this is new to the market. It was actually announced and put out on Indiegogo a little while ago. And basically what we have here is an ARM-based mini PC. It's capable of running Android, their own Station OS, which is also based on Android, Ubuntu, and EMU Elect. It's got a full aluminum enclosure, which passively cools the CPU. We've got a lot of ports on this unit, and if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you might have seen me review the Station PC M2, which does come in a bit smaller, but it's got a lower-end CPU, less RAM, and less expandability. So inside of the box, we're going to receive some mounting hardware. This can mount on the back of a monitor or wall. We've also got a little bit of hardware, so we can mount a 2.5-inch drive inside of here, or an M.2 a 6-foot HDMI cable, a USB Type-C cable for OTG, we've got a Wi-Fi, Bluetooth antennas, and a remote. This actually works on a 2.4 GHz dongle that's included with the unit. When it comes to I.O., over here on this side, we have dual gigabit Ethernet ports, a full-size HDMI port, and our power in. This runs on 12 volts at 2 amps, so around 24 watts, but it's not going to pull that much. In my test, I've pulled around 14 with this unit. Moving over to the other side, we have our power button, USB Type-C, which only works as OTG, unfortunately we can't get video out, a USB 3.0 port, two USB 2.0 ports, a micro SD card slot, and a 3.5mm audio jack. You might notice we also have another port over here, which kind of looks like another Ethernet port, but this is actually the control port. They do sell an accessory, we can plug into this and get GPIO out, or if you want to pull the bottom off, we can actually access the GPIO pins from there. This also has support for a 2.5 inch drive. You can use an SSD or a mechanical drive and slot it right in over here on this side. You can use this as internal storage or we can use it as a boot drive and have several different operating systems installed on this at one time. Now taking the bottom off, you can see we've got that 2.5 inch bracket in here. And when we remove that bracket, we can get access to the M.2 SSD slot. Now this has a 64 gigabyte drive installed, but we also have 64 gigabytes of storage on the board itself. They make these up to 128, and here's a quick look at the GPIO pins. It's accessible with the bottom removed or using their optional control port adapter. When it comes to the specs, for the CPU, this is using the RK3568. It's a quad-core Cortex-A55 CPU running at 2 GHz. For the GPU, we have the Mali G52 2EE. They offer several different RAM variants, 2GB, 4GB, and 8GB. I'm using the 8GB model, but all of them use LPDDR4 RAM. Up to 128GB of internal storage, plus we can use a micro SD card, a 2.5-inch SSD or mechanical drive, and an M.2 SSD up to 1TB. It's got built-in AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0, and it's capable of running Station OS, which we have installed on this. I wanted to give you a look at that. It's actually a really awesome operating system based on Android 11. You can also run a vanilla version of Android 11, Ubuntu, or EMU Elect. We do have several options for operating systems on the Station PC P2. So like I mentioned, out of the box this is running Station OS, which is based on Android 11. It's basically Station PC's operating system, great for media playback and things like that. Unfortunately, there's no Google Play installed, but there is a way to get it up and running. We can install a few different applications or third-party app markets if you just want to go that route, like Aptoid. But the first time you boot this up, it's going to give you a nice little walkthrough. You can set up your Wi-Fi, your location, and things like that. It's actually really easy to get right into the operating system itself. So I've just went through and installed a few applications that we're going to be testing out in this video. But one application that comes pre-installed is known as the OS Assistant. And this is actually really awesome. We're going to head over there right now. Like we saw, this does have a 256GB M.2 SSD installed, and from the OS Assistant, we can actually install another operating system to a separate drive, be it USB, micro SD card, a 2.5 inch drive, or that M.2 SSD. So right now, if we select our operating system, we've got three to choose from as making this video, or we can download one from their GitHub repository and install it from there, so it makes it really easy to get other operating systems up and running on this mini PC. Okay, so here's the main interface. I'm using the included remote, works on that 2.4 GHz dongle. You just plug it into one of the USB ports. If you want to use a mouse and a keyboard, you can also plug one of those in, or a Bluetooth controller, or even a wired controller. You can navigate the full operating system. Here's all of our apps here. I've just installed a bunch of stuff that we're going to be testing out. 
Overall, I really do like the interface that they have here. It's basically Android 11 with some of their apps installed. We got that OS Assistant, which makes it really easy to install a different operating system on a separate storage device, so you could dual boot this or even triple boot it. Now, this doesn't come with Google Play, and I wish they had Google Play installed, but there is a little recommendations app here that allows us to download a couple different third-party app stores, like Aptoid, which is the one I'm using. And we will be testing out some native Android games, some emulation, but first I want to take a look at some 4K video playback from YouTube. Alright, so here we are. I've got Big Buck Bunny going. This is 4K 60fps. Make sure we're at 4K, 2160, and we'll turn Stats for Nerds on. Overall, really impressed with the video streaming performance of this little chip here. Not bad at all. I mean, this is 4K 60. I did have a few drop frames on the initial load in, but it's really smooth. And when it comes to like 720 or 1080, you're not going to have any trouble with 60 at all. But seeing this run 4K so well is pretty impressive for this little tiny box. So on the initial load in, we had 25 drop frames, but through this whole thing, I didn't drop any more. Now our viewpoint is at 1080 because that's my screen, but this video is playing at 4K 60. And by the way, this is pulling 9 watts from the wall right now. We've got a kilowatt meter plugged in. So it's relatively low power when you're talking about 4K video playback here. But now I want to see how this little chip handles some native Android gaming, and then we're going to jump right into some emulation. When it comes to native Android gaming, there's a lot of stuff that I wanted to test, but I really can't because I don't have Google Play services. And the version of Minecraft that I was able to get to work without Google Play services is a little wonky. I think we're cutting off the top. It just doesn't look like it's full screen. I'm at 12 chunks right now with fancy graphics on, and with screen issues aside, it's actually running pretty well. The next one I tested was Asphalt 8. Again, I don't have Google Play services, so I couldn't go with Asphalt 9. That was one I really wanted to test. But, you know, I've run this on a lot of these lower-end chips, and this is some really decent performance here. I'm working on getting Google Play installed on this unit, and if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. If I'm able to do that, we will test some more native Android games, but now I wanted to check out some emulation. And first up, we have N64, Conker's Bad Fur Day, using Mupin64 plus FZ. I've got an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth, everything just linked right up, and this game is actually running much better than I thought it would. I figured it would be a super laggy mess. Now, it's definitely not perfect, but uh, overall, this is a playable experience when it comes to N64 on this thing. Next up, we have some Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. We're at the native resolution, can't do any upscaling right now because of my license with the app itself, but this is actually really impressive. So yeah, I mean, this little chip can definitely handle Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. I did not test the Flycast core, but uh, with performance like this, I think we might be good to go with that also. And about the highest we can go here is PSP, but it does run some of the harder to run games at 60. We're only at 1x resolution. If I upscale this at all, it drops right on its face. I have no frame skip going on, and I'm using the Vulcan back end. This little thing is definitely trucking through some PSP emulation. If you've ever tried to emulate this on lower end Android devices, you know how hard it can be. Even at 1x, this is still really good performance. There's one more thing I wanted to take a look at. With the OS Assistant, I was able to install Ubuntu 20.04. When you're booting this up, if you press that power button one time, it'll bring us into kind of the bootloader. From here, we can choose which operating system we want to boot into, and I'm just going to go with Ubuntu. It's installed on that 256GB M.2 SSD. And overall, this version of Ubuntu that they specifically designed for this chipset here is actually really snappy. You will get better performance out of Android, and that's really how it is with these little chips, especially Rock Chip. In my experience, I've always had better luck with Android, but it doesn't mean you couldn't use this as a desktop operating system. I mean, we're running Linux right now. You can open up Terminal and install any application you'd like, as long as it's compatible with ARM. But uh, we do have Chromium installed, and I wanted to check out some YouTube video playback with this. So here it is, and I'm having really good luck with 720p, 1080, getting a lot of drop frames, and 4K is kind of out of the question when you're running Ubuntu, but we did take a look at it when we were running Station OS or Android 11, and we got great performance. But with this operating system here, 720p is really where it's at, at least right now, without any updates. And this is the latest version that they offer right now from the OS Assistant. 
I'd like to install a bunch of different applications to test out. And if you're interested in seeing another video just on the Ubuntu side of things, let me know in the comments below. But overall, the Station PC P2 is actually a really fun little device to mess around with, and it performed much better than I thought it would. 4K video playback was something that I thought we'd struggle with. We did have a few drop frames on that initial load in, but it will handle 4K streaming. And when it comes to emulation, this did much better than I thought it would. If the interest is there, I can make a couple more videos on this little device. Uh, one other operating system that we didn't test here is EMU Elect, which is just basically an emulation front end operating system. And to tell you the truth, I'm pretty sure we're going to get better performance with emulation in Android, but we can always test that out if the interest is there. So let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more about the Station PC P2, I'll leave a link to their website in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions, you know where to leave them. And like always, Thanks for watching.